It's four o'clock in the morning. Get off my front porch. Gunny, if you wake up the kids, you're gonna play with them. Morning, Odin. Morning, stupid dog. Gunny, if you wake up Emily, she's gonna have you over for dinner. Hi, and welcome to Milgat Farms. My name is Kevin, along with my beautiful wife, Emily. We're the proud owners of Virginia's only USDA certified organic maple syrup farm. I know I said that fast, because we got a lot to do today. Gunny, urgh, that's not Gunny. That was not, where are you, Gunny? He has been disruptive all day, that's for sure. One of our friends and viewer has come out to our farm to spend the day, and they want to work. What do you think we should make her do? So Melly and I have known each other for about 20 years. She is a massage therapist, and she is the reason that I, I did really well on a race. Uh, I had done a race on a Saturday, and I called her up and said, hey, do you have an opening by chance for this afternoon? And she did. So she did her massage thing and it was awesome. And the next day I ran the fastest race I'd ever run. I did a 5K in something like 16 minutes. And that's not bad for an old man. At any rate, she is wonderful. She's come out to the farm to spend a couple of days and she said she wants to work. So let's go put her to work. What's the plan today? Work you till you're tired. Okay. <laughs> oh, are you okay for the video? Sure. All right, she said she's okay with the video. Let's see if we can kill her. <laughs> uh, mornings on the farm, the first thing we do is get all the animals fed. Uh, right? Look at that little guy. Where is he going? That was a chipmunk. <laughs> so, first thing we gotta do is look over at Little Dog. Yeah, the one on the left, it's A2A2 A2 Jersey. Big Dog is the one on the right. That's a brown Swiss, even though she's white. Okay. Um, little Dog's gonna have a baby. Oh. So she hasn't had it yet, bro, I don't see it. If she has one, she's gonna be close by. Okay. All right, so we checked. We have uh, two cows that are gonna get her, her and a heifer without a name. So, hey, we've got a problem with the calf, but that's not something you and I are gonna address. Uh, Emily and I are going to address that later today. We got to go up and check on the calf's foot. And that calf is somewhere over here. I don't know where she is. It's another little heifer calf. They like to hang around that maple tree over there. Right now, they're hanging around the, the drain for the head of the barn. Whenever I, I have a, like syrup or something that I'm doing and it gets washed down the floor, that's where they hang out. Yeah, we're missing one of the calves. So that's not everybody. Porter's not there. And Biscuit, he's off doing his business. We kind of pimped him out recently. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Travis was wondering about, about Porter. So no, he was wondering about Molly because we saw Porter on the video. Yeah, well, I didn't say much about that. That's a hard one. Uh, but he's a really good friend and he's a good animal. Just kind of weird. I didn't see it coming. Really? Yeah, I didn't really. So what we're doing is we're coming down here. The other spring is almost out of water. So what we're doing is going to pull from this one, and we're going to fill up our tank behind us. Earlier, I came down and got it running. It worked pretty well. But then somehow I shot the end of it off, and I can't find it. That's not unusual for me to lose stuff. All right. <laughs> so I have... I bought this a couple of years ago, and I didn't do anything with it. I just, it's been sitting in the barn. This is the first time I've ever used it. Oh yeah? So it took a little <laughs> bit to get it, to get it going. Um, this is more right where it would be. Cool. I've got, I probably should put a spark plug in it. All right, let's see if that'll get it going. I meant to bring my rain boots, but I didn't. <laughs> Did it get you? Just a little bit. <laughs> so 
Sorry about that. <laughs> that's I'm okay. telling you, it's always something stupid going on the farm. That was in the line of fire. <laughs> that was fun. All right, let me put you uh, out of the line of fire. You stand over here. Oh, let me put this. this. <laughs> Funny to watch. <laughs> All right, your job is going to be. What's my job? Hold this guy right here. We don't want to hit the bottom because we're going to suck up some muck. Okay. Just hold that thing down there. Like right here. Hold this guy right here. We don't want to hit the bottom because we're going to suck up some muck. Okay. Just hold that thing down there. Like right here. Yeah, that'll work. Um, now, is this a... That's, this is a water that's coming from a spring that I developed up that way. And it broke last this year. The dam broke. So we're still getting some water, but we're not getting what we were getting. Okay. Because it's now running down through here and heading that way. That's why all oh. that there is green. So there are, in this area right here, um, there's three springs or four springs. Okay. There's one at the corner of the fence that we're catching in a, in a, in a round ring that I pull out from, and that one is drying up. So I'm pulling from it now, and it puts water behind you into that water room. Okay. And then it daisy chains down to the next water in that pasture, and that's how those animals and these animals are fed. So it's bleeding off too much water for what's coming in. This was a second spring that I developed, but I didn't finish it, and the, the dam broke. So how do you develop a spring? Got a video about that. Okay, now, now I'll go watch the video. It's kind of neat. You, you, all right, I can give you an example. And I'll show the people on TV too, on the, on the thing. <clears throat> okay. We're now, not asking too many questions. No. You need to get your stuff done, I understand. Oh, we'll get it done. Okay. Are you see this area right here with this grass? Yeah. Okay, that's a low spot or a wet spot. If you okay. walked up here, this is indicative of, of water. Okay, if you look through the whole pasture, uh -huh. you don't see any of that water. Right. But this little reedy type grass, that's indicative that there's a water source here. Okay. Somewhere in here, it's gonna it's coming out of the ground. And so what you do is you go find that spot and you dig it out. And what you'll see is it'll start to pour and then you put uh, a pipe in there, some rocks down, you gotta dam it up too. And if you dam it up, then you've got the ability to, to capture that water and use it. That's what that's about. Okay. Now that's called developing a spring. There's a lot more to it because you gotta finish it, which I did not, <laughs> obviously. And that caused some challenges, but we still have some water here and that's what we're gonna use. <clears throat> now, let's try that again. Okay. This time, I will run this thing a lot lower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all right. I should have uh, probably <laughs> done something with that. Uh, Give us an idea of how much water we're gonna need to feed all the animals. Move, Gunny. What is that contraption? That's a hay rake. They mean the yellow and the green? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a hay rake. What it does is it takes the hay when we cut it. Or some people call it mowing, some people call it hay cutting. Um, you cut the grass or the, the fields, and then you've gotta do a thing called tedding first. And tedding is when you kind of 
flip that hay over or flip that grass over and then you can come back and rake it. And that tool oh is the God. tool that you use to rake it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Gunny and his girls. They'll follow me everywhere. Yeah. There's only one rooster there. Oh really? What's hang this out one? There. That's Gunny. Hey. He's a rooster. He doesn't have a tail. I know it's kind of ah. weird looking. Okay, so the other was one with the cones. They're the girls? Yep. Oh. Those are called aerocons. Okay. Yeah, um, I don't know what breed he is. In fact, I think he was born on the farm. Uh, but he won't he won't intermix with the other flock that we're going to do in a minute. Okay. And that's okay for now. Mm -hmm. Except this morning he was cackling on the or crowing on the front porch. So his his area has been used for some other birds that we got to feed, and we've got to <laughs> reorganize all that fairly soon. <clears throat> now, this area right here is the overflow of our spring. Um, the pipe is behind you. It comes out of the, off the mountain there. And, oh, that's the pipe right there? Right. Okay. In fact, I'll take you up and show you the spring. It's not going to... to get all the water we can out of this thing. In the right spots. Let me say it like that. So come on up here. Now, this is a tank that we use to capture additional overflow. So the, the, that's the overflow pipe right there. Mm -hmm. And the water would run down here um, and it will go into this tank here. And right now nothing's coming in. Mm. So that's a big concern. This is just overflow. It's not, it's not just water being wasted. It's gonna be wasted anyway. Mm -hmm. And it used to just flow out and just go over the hill, down the creek and off, <laughs> off it went. Well, I, I set up these waterers here in order to capture some of that. And so throughout the year, I'm not using my storage water to feed my animals. I'm using overflow. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, let's go, let's go up and I'll show you the storage water. Do you have rain barrels at the house to capture? Uh, yes and no, All right? So rain barrels for us would not do much good. Okay. Because your typical rain barrel is maybe 30 gallons. Okay. Maybe 50 if you're lucky. Well, an animal like a cow is going to drink 30 to 50 gallons a day. Wow. So if they're drinking that much water, one rain barrel on one gutter is not going to do much. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a couple options. We have totes, which is what that thing right over there is. Oh. That's a water tote. That's 320 gallons or 300 gallons approximately. We have other totes that may be a little larger, a little bit smaller. We can put them on our gutters if it rains. It hasn't rained mm -hmm. in a while. Um, we capture water. And, and store it that way. Short-term storage. Mm -hmm. You can't store water for, for long long periods of time and those kind of things without putting chlorine in it and stuff like that. I don't want to do that to the animals. Mm -hmm. well, let's go up and look at, <clears throat> let's see if we can go look at the spring. All right, from where we were, we're about 300 meters up. come out and look over here this is where we are walk around the back okay. this is the water that services the cottage the red barn and all of our animals this is the holding tank up there's a collection point I'll walk you up there in a second we want to look in here and see what we got Ooh, that's not much is it that's because we got a leak somewhere well, how deep is that I don't know I'm sorry I'm having a little bit of a senior moment right now because I came up here the other day and this was much higher than it was. Hmm. So, like we've got, that's not much water coming in at all. Now, what are these pipes on the side? Is that like- oh, That's a vent pipe. Okay. And I don't know what that one is. That's just thrown there. So right now we're gonna be sitting at Okay, 42 inches. So I'll remember that. Later today I'll come back. That should be higher. Mm -hmm. We're gonna check a couple of things to make sure we're right. Wow, this is not good. 
not good. This should, and that's what it got me concerned down at the. Okay, that's what got me concerned down there was that the water's not overflowing. It should have overflowed by now. Come on up here. I'll show you where it comes in. Now watch where you put. Watch where you're walking. There's nothing but rocks. Okay. You see that pipe right there? Mm -hmm. That's leading into your tank. Oh, That's your okay. overflow. Look at the salamander. Oh my gosh. That lets you know you got good clean water. So what is the bottom pipe for? That's actually just the pipes of, that you can put on this one here to keep it higher than these two, so no water goes in there when you're cleaning it out. And how about the top pipe? That's what you mean. This one here, yeah. overflow shoots oh, okay. out right over there. So that pipe right there goes up stream uphill and that's your collection point and that's what we clean out that's what that video the other day was all right let's go down and figure out these valves and then we'll go back to feeding yeah, I will follow. all right the plan today is to bottle 15 gallons of syrup okay. to make make some smoke you can go around on your left here and hop in um but but this may change our plans okay. and that's how the farm kind of works at times especially when we're out of water this fill up with the well and then oh you know what I wager that it's not shut off um, we'll start we'll start to fill up this with the well the tank here so these are gonna get to about 40 to 50 pounds and they'll dress out around 30 anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds I've had some dress out at 35 how much do they weigh now eh, about four. <laughs> Pounds. Yeah, now turkeys are probably the hardest thing to to grow, in my opinion, because it costs it costs so much money. Like, so let's say you sell a bird, and not not that we sell birds, but let's say you sold a bird for a hundred a hundred dollars. You're gonna have about eighty dollars in feed in that bird to get him to the size you want him. So to me chickens i mean not chickens but turkeys are the hardest things that we raise they're, they're their best they're delicious but they're one of the hardest things that we raise for our meat okay. and i might say hard that's, that's probably not the right answer difficult in that it just takes so much feed to get them to where you want them. unlike a chicken a chicken's gonna go a chicken is going to become ready to process in about eight weeks, normally, depending on what, what feed you use. But a turkey is, is, is like three months or more. How old are these guys? Um, they're about four weeks, four to five weeks. Oh, wow. All of them are trying to fight over grass. Yeah, now they're, they have a different behavior too, which is kind of interesting when you stop to think about it. Chickens scratch turkeys peck they're not gonna peck you but they look they're looking for something versus a chicken which is gonna scratch and get something Ooh. that may not be the same same for a wild turkey these turkeys that we raise they're not gonna scratch the surface of the ground so every now and then they might do a little short scratch but for the most part they're they're gonna pick grass and they're gonna pick what they see it's so when we move the birds there's always a pile a little bit of feed and that's what Gunny and his girls get. We give them a little bit more too, but they do get that as well. They proofing up. What? They're proofing up over there. <laughs> that's a Tom. All right, get in. Come on. Every single one is a Tom. Come on, everyone. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Now, okay. what we're doing is we're, we're pressurizing this, this um, keg and it's going to push it into here. Make sure all your valves are shut. Let's see why I say that out loud. And then we just... There we go. Now, that's a lot of pressure. There's 15.7 gallons supposedly in here, but there's not always 15 gallons in here. And what you don't want to do is blow this thing completely out or it's going to splash everywhere. So what we do is we're ch I'm checking it the whole time 
see if I, how much it weighs. Yeah, it's starting to get a little lighter. A syrup keg weighs 230, 235 pounds. like this morning's water. We do not want that. So that emptied the whole keg already? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have to. I used to use a different press, but um, I got this particular unit. It works like a champ. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wait just a moment. We'll wait a minute, let it drain back down in, and then we're going to take this keg, flip it upside down, and put it on top. And we use boards to do that part. Sir? Yeah, he is. Clean, clear. That's good looking, sir. So, now that that's doing its thing, this is when it starts to get warm in here. At this point, that's going to drain for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm just going to let it drain. I don't have to have it. Once it's done draining, then by then we should have the room just about set up the way we want it. And what we're going to do now is get our bottle ready. And then we're going to get our bottles into here, get our table set up, our top set up, get our gloves set up, and then this should be up to temperature. We've got the stove on high, it's going to get warm in here. You got plenty of water over there. What a great day it was with Melanie. I got to take her up in the sugar bush. That was fun. If you've never seen that, check out some of the videos that we have about maple syrup and my morning commute. That's probably one that, that you don't want to miss. It's kind of cool. If I can put it up here, I will. I'm not sure if I can get it up here though because we're getting towards the end of the video. It was a lot of fun having Melanie and Mike on the farm. Melanie helped out with morning chores. That was a blast. How'd you like that part where she got wet? <laughs> I didn't plan that. I really didn't. It was just crazy how it all worked out. We are still having a water problem here on the farm. Our spring is all but dried up. We're just getting a few drops. So now everybody, that meaning the cottage, the red barn, and us, and the white barn is on one well. So hopefully this week we'll get a little bit of water and we can get that tank filled. That way we can get um, the cottage off of the well. The barn is always on the well, so there's not a lot going on up here. But we are having to feed some of our animals or water some of our animals rather and that could be a challenge thanks a lot for watching our video we hope you enjoy them as much as we enjoy making them for you because we really do we really really love sharing what god's done for us with you do come back come back often love to see you in the comments let me know where you are where you're watching from in the comments i think that's kind of neat all right my kid's screaming thanks again for watching and until next time god bless you